Oh, he can't see it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He's got a, uh, I believe this fish has a, a broken spine. Uh, yeah. That's a beauty. That's one of three. He's kind of deformed, though. He's kind of deformed. I would be surprised when I caught this particular fish if he did not have a, uh, a broken spine and yeah he's definitely a keeper that's hey there welcome to jersey jim fish fish mongrel jim here i caught these fish oh, hang on a minute first things first i just got done work i i so i got done work i got called into work early because i thought it was Today's Wednesday, I thought, it, or today's Thursday, I thought it was Wednesday. So a little behind the eight ball in that, in, the, in that regard. But here it is, the most important beer of the day, the one after work. Damn it, Jim, what the hell is the matter with you? So how to fillet crappie. I got a, it really doesn't matter what knife you use. I got the Dexter Russell 1378, the Dexter Russell 8 inch stainless, and I got the uh, the Cabela's or Rapala. Is that Rapala? Yeah, no, it was a gift. It's a good knife. Not terribly sharp, and that's surprising because I spent some time sharpening that thing at one point in the not too distant past. This fish here, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this fish has a broken spine maybe in a couple of spots so i'm going to fillet that one after and this one right jaw uh you're kind of right in the way i'm right-handed if you're watching this as an instructional video and you want to fillet a fish right or left-handed watch this movie in a mirror or uh i don't know watch it in reverse maybe Maybe the other uh, the other part of this movie is how to straight clean. So straight clean it means well you'll see. Um, these were scaled at the lake. I'll put some of that footage right y'all. Oh, I guess we scale both of them while we have to uh, get everything out. So this fish scaler start at the tail, grasp the head. Right at the gills here. Start at the tail and the shoulder. Draw forward. And then these scales, you can kind of go, instead of going back to front, if you go top to bottom, they don't flick it as far. Make sure you get this area here is uh, the one that's most often missed and under here. that and then same thing on the other side start on the shoulder and then on the belly and then connect the two you just do like that All right rinse Back on the ice. I, I didn't bring my scissors. I oh look at this. Oh, is that a snapping turtle or a painted turtle? Oh, I think Tommy Tommy Bozarth wants that. I don't have a bag with me though. Or do I? Oh yeah, I do. Perfect. All right. This one here, I think I. Uh, mentioned in the movie where I caught it it likely has a broken spine you can tell from the the curvature and it's got some lumps to straight clean them you want to cut the tail off I'm gonna fillet that after to be clear and if I was gonna you know like a, I'm gonna be skinning these I don't know why I scaled both of them because I, I will be skinning both of these. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll leave one with the skin on. I'm not going to be cooking these fish. 
my uh, mom has never had crappie fillet, and it's a it's it's one of the few freshwater fish I will consider eating. So I'm gonna you know like I'm cutting this for her, both of them. So the head has to come off. The head has to come off for straight cleaning, unless you want the head on. If you want the head on, after cutting all the fins off, you want to cut down there at the throat, what you just saw, and then cut some of the membranous material around that. Turn your, your scissors around, turn the fish around, and then go in right jaw bisecting the distance in between the halves of the fish and then oh yeah I don't have my scaler here but basically you get your scaler and pin the gills down to the board kind of like that right like that and then grab the fish by the skull not back here I think I got it. I don't know. I'm flipping exhausted. I spent 18, more than 18 hours in my kayak in the last two days. And uh, 30 hours, including work, in the last two days. And I'm pretty, pretty well. I thought I had today off. So you want to cut up into that bloodline there on both sides if you're straight cleaning. All right, and then give it all a good rinse. Give it all a good rinse and then you'll have a straight cleaned bluegill. If you want to take the head off, I mean the options are you can just clip the head off like this. You know, clip it, feel where the meat ends around the skull which is right about here, and I just give it a whack right there. It's a better way. When you when you spend a lot of time on your knives to get them sharp, there's this bone. Right jaw. That goes to the skull, and then there's the collarbone that goes to the collar. Oddly enough, who would have known? Right, so you cut on both sides of that. Cut the skin. Right about here. And then you can just snap the head right off. Right, so that is, uh, minus the rinsing, that is a straight cleaned bluegill. Or a uh, crappie, rather. And I guess I'll show you how to butterfly them. How to split and then butterfly it, but this is the this is going to be the problematic one with the broken backbone. I'll show you that because I like a challenge. Be right back. All right, there's there's a way you can split these, and from the from the back, that's the southern way. But as I am here in uh, glorious New Jersey, I'm going to show you this way. And I haven't done too many of these. The crappie, it's got a uh, very, a very high rib cage. And you see how, like, it goes into the. Yeah, it's it's very, uh, it's very unique to this fish. Unique, perhaps, to this fish. But yeah, you want to cut from there back into the lump which is the spine and then cut through the rib bones like that and once you're through the rib bone or through the the pin bones and the rib bones and once you're through that you kind of walk the knife out the other side yeah I see I see broken spine lots of broken spine in this fish if you just want to fillet these damn things 
there's no need to go through what I'm going through right now. And if you just want to see how to fillet them, go to go to this number on the end screen. And you won't have to watch this absolute nonsense. So there's rib bones here and pin bones. The rib bones go out that way and the pin go pin bones go in that way. So to get the rib bones out, a flexible knife, something like that, is useful. You get on the north side of the uh, the rib bones and just run out. Just a like of that. Almost. Almost like that. There you go. That's all rib bones right there. Lots of them. And then to get the other side out. Hey, you see that? I know it. I freaking know it. Broken back. Maybe in a couple places. We'll find out in a minute. Normally the, the, uh, the anal fin on a fish. And like I said, I haven't caught too many of them. The anal fin is usually back right around here, uh, past where the swim bladder is. So you want to get the knife underneath that, that fin. Like that. In. Of course, I had to pick the, the the one with the broken back to to display how or to explain how to a butterfly, a fish, which is, is it's essentially going to be a fillet, two fillets after I'm done. And then there's a number of ways you can do this, but yeah, we'll do it this way. You get the knife. So I've separated the back half of the twisted, contorted uh, backbone of this fish, and get the knife underneath these rib bones. All right, you see the knife there? And we're just gonna walk it forward, push down on the fillet and turn the knife up that way as we walk it forward. I might miss some meat on this fish. It's not going to be a great yield, but it'll look pretty when it's done. I assure you. Oh, we didn't miss too much. That right there. We missed that. That tea bag. And, uh, oh yeah, we missed that up there, but we can connect that to the front edge. Yeah, it's actually pretty bad. So we have the, we didn't cut through the other side. And we got that, this is all bones right there. I'll take our scissors. And walk the scissors back. Only to the uh, to the rear dorsal fin, and then you can just pull, and it'll all come off. So that is not that's not good right there. I missed that. We'll tuck that away. We we'll give it a we'll give it a little <laughs> we'll give it a little dressing like that. You'll never even know. And then there's uh, pin bones here, right in here. The collar is going to come off of these. The collar, it has a, a bone that runs this way and a couple bones that run that way. I'm going to cut them off right now. That's that. It's easier to, to cut that out before you pin bone them. So if you go, you feel along the fillet from front to back. Get on the north side of that and then... On the south side of it, that's all the pin bones right there. 
on this side. Same thing here. We'll go ahead and cut the collar off. And then, Vivil, Vivil, Vivil. Really, like I, I kind of cut all the, the pin bones out of that side. There's still some bones in this, and the bones are attached to the center section, which uh, held the fins. If you just want to fillet this bullshit, it's so much easier than this, but I, like I said, I like a, uh, a challenge. That is a butterflied crappie fillet. You could stuff this with mushrooms, all kinds of stuff, like onions and garlic, and wow, I'm hungry. Uh, yeah, actually, that being said, I cut this kind of high. That's the rack of bones right there. You can take them all the way down to knot. Right? You want to take them all the way down to knot if this is how you want to do it. And then, yeah, you, if I had more energy, I'd be putting all kinds of awesome stuff in this and then stuffing it like that I you know oh, the crappie is so damn good but as this is for my mom we're gonna cut the bones out which that is one boneless fillet and then that is the other Boneless filet. All right, hang on a minute. I'm going to have my second sip of beer, and then we'll filet that one in a proper manner. Maybe I don't skin them because the crappie has a very, very thin skin. I, I'll try skinning one of them because I like a challenge. Hang on. All right. Here we go. Already scaled, like I mentioned. Behind this fin, there's a bone right there. You want to aim for that and then feel up around the head, around the uh, the cranial cavity. Get your <clears throat> knife right in there and go up around uh, that right there. Turn the knife this way. Aim for just past that fin right there. And you, like I said, you can use any knife to to cut any fish. I'm going to use this one. As it, it is the sharpest. <laughs> and so from head to tail, fish at the edge of the board. The first cut was into the spine. Second cut is going to be halfway between the, the, uh, the, the anal fin yeah kind of further further uh further back this this fish has a a cavity in its belly that's like that unique very unique fish anatomically speaking All right that way and then you free up the head the shoulder and then Cut through the pin bones. And walk the knife down. The fillet. That's a beautiful fillet. Look at that. More or less boneless. The other side. If you didn't scale these. There's a, a trick with the with the fish. If you didn't scale it, the bones or the, the scales rather back this way. You free up the tail. The scales on the rear of a fish are, are quite tough, so I would recommend going in near the the uh, the dorsal fin, the rear dorsal fin. And it slips right in just like that. And then a flexible knife. 
turn the knife sharp pointy pokey side out that way and then come out that way and then up the rib bones towards your towards your towards your wrist essentially careful everybody and then walk it out the other side right fucking beautiful huh like I said I haven't caught I haven't cut too many crappie that's not too bad I could get really quite good at it if I had if I if it oh fuck that hit my floor <laughs> If um, if I was a better fisherman, that's that's what it amounts to. But then the skin, and I will take the skin off of both of these fillets. Beautiful fillets, and pin bones, right jaw, cut in, turn the knife, and cut them after. It might be easier. You don't cut through the skin. All right, so here's a trick. The steel. steel you want a, kind of a longer knife. Uh, if you're right-handed, you go away from you or on the top of the steel. That way the burr is kind of up this way skin a fish and make sure you don't have any detritus on your board get it started you probably not even see that get it started back here yeah like crappie has got a really thin skin I don't know if I'm gonna be able to to skin these I probably shouldn't have scaled them Too bad. If you get a patch, I mean the patch doesn't really bother me. Hang on. That doesn't really bother me as I'm not eating it. And if you get a patch like that, you want to stick the knife. You want to bisect the patch. Get the knife in the center. This might not work. Kind of like that. Bisect it. And then come in the other way. Like that, that's uh, that's skin. I'll show you that again. A little patch back here. That's it, skinless, boneless. Yeah, maybe I'll try it again. almost worked All right, mom can deal with that yeah skinless bones skin staying on these no bones oh, there's a couple pin bones there I can feel them. no big deal if you cook this you wouldn't you wouldn't notice those bones but as wojo mojo or whatever your YouTube channel name is you recommended that I give some instruction on how to fillet rather than fish because I'm a horrible fisherman you didn't say that but I realize I don't know everything that I want to know about catching fish and I will never I am much better at processing fish than I ever want to be about filleting fish or processing fish. I'm going to show you how to freeze these after. Hang on. So if you had a uh, massive amount of these things to clean, I can understand the the necessity for 
uh, racking them, which means just cutting behind the gill and then running the knife out the side. And that's a, I mean, that's a possible solution to, to having an absolutely amazing meal as crappie is a fantastic fish. But when you do that, you cut into the belly cavity and you introduce a whole lot of bacteria to the, to the otherwise beautiful and delicious filet and you get you 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 miss a lot of fish you, we're harvesting these fish for for human consumption so if you were to do that and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing that but you would want to definitely take the fillets that you have produced and put them you know, like cut them into ice water salted ice water salt kills bacteria microbes fungus whatever whatever but saran wrap these are going to be used probably individually as my mom is 73 and uh kind of small so these are all for her hang on a minute Uh, you could freeze these just in a bag for up to two months. If you want to freeze them for long term, you would want to go ahead and do this. I just put them in saran wrap and then kind of roll them up. If you were going to freeze them for long term, you would want to freeze them on a cookie tray like a, a baking sheet something like that and freeze them on a baking sheet and get them well frozen and then put them well pick them up individually and spray them with a uh, a mister like a uh, spray bottle of water right and then put them back on the baking sheet you can do that multiple times and you can get like six months out of this easily six months a lot of people like to wrap them up in uh, parchment or wax paper that draws the moisture out of the fillets so I, unless it's just short term once this is frozen, once this is frozen, you can basically take this out of the freezer as they're they're not touching, and drop it on the counter, and they'll shatter, and then you can take out what you need for the night's meal, and then put, pop the rest back in the freezer. And if you do that, and you were like, well, that was seven, that was five months ago. You can always pack them again while they're frozen. Spray them with the, the bottle and put them back in the freezer. The water keeps it from freezer burning. And that's the, the most detrimental thing to having harvested such a delicious fish as this. And risk wasting it and that's uh, that's important to me that's why I'm sharing this movie thank you Wojo Mojo or yeah I think it's Wojo Mojo for suggesting I do more catch uh, clean or just processing catching anybody can catch fish that's what he said not me man not me I am uh, quite uniquely special in that I will never know what I need to know about catching fish but I do appreciate the comment and we just did that for mom love you mom I'll talk to you later thank you for watching that's about it go fuck your hat bye oh my god look at this crappie on the chatterbait in the middle of nowhere like I'm, I'm in between here and there. Oh man, that was a nice one.
Fucking A. Beauty. I'll try that again. Ah, fuck yeah. I knew when the I knew when this area was in shade, we would finally fucking get one. And I do have some ice in the bag. And some uh some sushi, my dinner. Uh no neck knife. I forgot my neck knife. Uh, should I bleed it? No, I won't bleed it out. It's good. Alright, first one. I am sorry, my friend. You will not go to waste. You will not go to waste. But fuck yeah. I did it. I fucking did it. I fucking did it. Look at this fish. Look at this fish. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I got my two. I'm good with two. I'll straight clean one and then fillet it. I'll show you how to do it. Which, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a real quick version in this movie because uh, this will be this will be the entire day, and then uh, I'll just do another video for instruction. Speak, meathead. Speak.